Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be discussing which series I will never finish. So when I say I will never finish, it's most likely that uh, one or two series on this list I might go back and finish the series off, but the majority of these are book series that I've either lost interest in or I just don't want to finish the book series. Also note that this video is nothing against the authors themselves, that's just my own personal opinion and whether I want to finish reading their book series or not. And if any of the books on this list happen to be one of your favorite series, there's no hard feelings, these are just my thoughts and opinions and I'm just sharing them in this video. The first series that I won't ever finish is the Three Dark Crowns series by Kendra Blake. I first wanted to read this YA fantasy series because it was really hyped up as a really dark fantasy series and it follows a set of triplets who are all competing against each other for the crown to ultimately become queen of this land. I have only read the first book in the series and with that book it was really tough to get through, it was really slow paced and the concept of the set of triplets needing to fight against each other, basically warring queens against each other was a really nice concept and each of the triplets have different magical abilities one has fire magic, one can ingest poisons and the last one can control plants and communicate with animals but unfortunately none of them really stood out to me as like a starring character for myself I didn't really connect with any of them I think what made it really hard for me to connect to the characters were being introduced to so many of them all at once at the beginning and I felt the world building was lacking a little bit. In the end, I was hoping for a lot more than what I had gotten from this book series. So I will simply just won't be continuing on with this book series. The next book series I won't finish is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Marharan. I think that's how you pronounce her name. So this book series at first is everything I really want in a YA fantasy series. There's enemies to lovers, there's witches and witch hunters, you have a marriage of convenience, and you have a lot of witty bantering in their relationship throughout the book. At first, I really did enjoy reading this book. I've only read Serpent and Dove, which is this first book I have right here. One of the things that I did believe was lacking was the world building itself, but do learn about, I think, the world more in the later books. This entire novel does rely on its characters to carry the story forward, and that's not bad because I enjoyed reading about Lou and Reed. So their romance is what kept me reading in this book and is what carried the book for me. So I actually do remember there being like a spiteful witch character that's after Lou. And other than that, there are some side characters. And I remember in this book that like honey buns were like a really fun thing. And the main character Lou really enjoys honey buns, which are like cinnamon buns in our world. But other than that, I did actually read this first book twice because I was preparing to read Blood and Honey, the sequel. I think the one thing that did turn me off from continuing the series were all the mixed reviews that I've heard from people on the internet and stuff about the sequel. And I have bought the sequel, but I have still yet to pick it up. So I think this is one of the series that I might give another shot later on if I feel like it. But in the meantime, I have moved on to other books and I will just continue on to read other books and leave this one aside. And right now it's like a maybe to continue with this series. So this next series that I will never be finishing is The Witcher series by Andrzej Sapowski if that's how you pronounce his name. And I did want to mention that I did love the books of which I've read in this series and I've read the two prequel books which are um, The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny and I also read the first two books in the series, Blood of Elves and Time of Contempt. I stopped at book two and although the book series is engaging and I love learning more about the world based on the Witcher of video games and the TV show of course, I did really like learning about the world even more from the books but I think overall I just stopped because I simply lost interest of learning more stuff in this world and I think I lost interest specifically because of the writing style and I do believe the book series is originally written in Polish and so then it's translated to English and sometimes with translated works it's a bit difficult for me to get into them because maybe it's just like the style and the voices 
a little bit off. Other than that, it's just the matter of picking and choosing which books I want to read versus reading a series out of obligation and needing to be up to date to every single thing in fandom. But overall, I still enjoyed the Witcher series a lot and I still will continue to support the Witcher series. So my next book series I want to mention is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. So this is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast and so far of the trilogy, I've read the first two books and I've enjoyed both of those two books as well. But after thinking about some specific events in book two, which is called A Heart So Fierce and Broken, there's some questionable actions of one certain character and I feel like it could have had more build-up and development for that scene to happen. The build-up in the sense of the actions that this character goes through would be less drawing to the readers and would seem less out of character for that one particular character. I'm not going to say the name because it's spoilers. But other than that, the world building in this fantasy series is incredibly well done. It's really immersive and you really feel that beauty and the beast romance aspect as well but the characters themselves are also quite original in their thoughts and their actions this is the other book series that i will probably give another chance in the future whenever i change my mind overall i was uncertain of putting this book series on this list since the writing is fantastic and really digestible and i really had a fun time reading this book i think it's been like a few years now since the last book came out and I still haven't picked it up. Maybe I have an aversion to ending series off. So again, I think this book series on this list is specifically because I lost interest and no hard feelings against the author or the book series itself. But A Curse So Dark and Lonely is one of the top series that I most likely will get back to. Next up is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a YA historical fiction series that focuses on solving murder mysteries with our crime-fighting duo Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell. It's either set in the early 1800s or early 1900s in England, London originally. So I've read through the first three books of this quartet series and the first two books being Stalking Jack the Ripper and Hunting Prince Dracula. Those two were really great to read through. The murder mysteries really held my attention. The forensic science aspect of those two books also were excellent in their discoveries of learning the truth of who the killer is. Also, the dynamic between Audrey Rose and Thomas is of course, very fun to read about. However, what turned me off from the rest of the series is book three, Escaping from Houdini. And I felt this book lacked from a significant and gripping murder mystery case. And it felt like the author just repeated the story again because each book centers around a new murder mystery case. I just felt it was really repetitive and I didn't feel there was any new development with their characters except that there's a random new love interest that pops up. I didn't really feel the need to finish off this book series. It's like, okay, the main couple in this book series will end up together anyways. And I didn't really have a need to find out how exactly that happened. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> One of the other things in the third book specifically is that I wanted something new and refreshing. And maybe the romance turmoil in that book was something new, but it didn't really capture my attention. However, this author's writing has continuously improved, especially in her Kingdom of the Wicked series, which I have right behind me. So her writing has improved in this series a lot, and I really like the characters in this one more than the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. And I think the concept itself of this new book series of hers is more entertaining for me to read. Overall, Stalking Jack the Ripper series remains on this list. Okay, so this last book series that I will never finish is The Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. So this one is adult historical fiction that describes a romance that defies time. And just to start off, I watched the TV show and I have tried to pick up the first book a couple times now, I think two, three times, and I just can't simply get through the first book. I think the TV show does an excellent job at portraying of what occurs in the books from what I've heard on social media and Twitter specifically, and that people are pleased at the adaptation. The story itself 
of Outlander follows Claire who mysteriously travels through the Standing Stones in Scotland back to the 1700s and there she meets Jamie Fraser. I have nothing against the book series itself. The writing was fine when I did read it. I think it's the genre itself of historical fiction that I sometimes struggle with to get through so I decided to put the book series down and just watch the TV show. <laughs> and also the TV show was releasing the episodes a lot more quickly than I had the motivation then to read the books. And I think one thing that does turn me off about the Outlander series as a whole is the mention of the various sexual assault scenes in the books and on the TV show. They're pretty graphic so that is a warning if you are interested in that series. I do skip those scenes when they come up. I guess that's another reason why I didn't pick up the books. Based on the show itself, I really enjoyed Outlander for its reoccurring themes of war, love, family, and trust. There's a lot of issues that happened because back then in the 1700s, and then you follow our characters through rebellions and wars, and it's not fun for our characters, but you can't help but keep on watching. And this current season, season 6, is really intense and I'm really excited to see what happens next. However, I won't pick up the book series and that's okay. So that was my last book series I mentioned. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And again, all my opinions are my own and there's nothing against the authors nor if these are your favorite book series. It's just I personally just don't see myself reading these book series in the near future. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.